Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Convention with the Willie Cowboy Book Roundup. We've covered most of this week's books. Now, so let's keep on trucking. Kicking things off, we've got Darth Vader number 36. Where we left off, Vader's powers are, Vader's force abilities are hard to control at the moment, and he has enlisted the aid of uh, Dr. Afra to help him with find means of potentially controlling it. This has led to him procure went to an old uh, separate an old separate workshop uh, and retrieving the the Zaley shield, a weapon made of kyberite that can help force users fo users fo for, uh, focus their energies. That said, there's been a, a gathering of droids who've been wronged by Vader in the past have gathered with a pre with the intention of taking Vader on. So the story goes back and forth between two weeks previously when the droids were get were being rallied to get rallied together against Vader. And at the present where they they attack Vader. Interspersed with them explaining their plan before uh, putting it into motion. Um, the basic idea becomes <clears throat> that uh, G90 will uh, be the vanguard, kind of protecting the rest of the droids from the... attacking Vader first while, to protect the others, and uh, the rest of the droids will have kyberite shields, with the idea being that uh, that will deflect uh, Vader's for forced energy back to Vader. But uh, he has an additional weapon. One of the droids, uh, Arex, turns out that um, after, uh, or before murdering Arex's uh, Jedi Master on, on the river moon of Aldalim, Vader tore uh, Eric's arm off and threw him off a cliff. Then he used parts of uh, Eric's body to, re to rebuild his own body. The thought being that perhaps uh, er if Eric's not close enough, maybe he could take control of uh, Vader's body through the parts of his own body that were used. Um, this seems to work for a moment, however. It goes both ways, and so Vader's able to take control of Eryx, and uh, so it all turns out that it was a ploy. BT-1 and uh, Triple Z are also among those involved, and well, they're there for, for a good old-fashioned murder. Though yes, they are more than eager. They they, they will more than happily turn on the uh, other droids because they're not picking up who they were. Um, but uh, Afra makes her escape after learning from uh, Ochi. The only, it seems the only person, the only time that Vader's really gets close to scared as if someone brings up the uh, kid that built the first Death Star. But, uh, Aphra escapes and the droids which be rebuilt for Vader's preparations. Preparations for what? We'll find out. That is where the issue ends, however. We are building up towards yet another uh, crossover within the uh, Star Wars books. This, time, this one called Dark Droids. Um, the seeds for said crossover were planted during, uh, I think it was the Revelations one shot from last year, as well as the Han Solo and Chewbacca miniseries, also from last year. So, we'll get the uh, whole thing soon enough. Moving on, though, to our next book. We've got Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 36. Where we left off, crew of bounty. Uh, Tonga's uh, crew had uh, had a few changes. 
and they they recruited Boba Fett to join, though he had something he had to take care of first. Kind of like, you help me, I'll help you. And so, the crew uh, takes, Vader, takes Boba Fett's ship and lands on uh, Quancy, the junk, the junk moon of Lord Mantell. Seemingly to turn Fett over to uh, the Black Sun. Before the before they arrive at the, at the moon, um, Fett is has having learned of what's going on with uh, Valance. Asks if Valance remember truly truly remember him, and Valance just says that uh, he had a friend. Name is just out of reach on the edge of his mind, Han Solo. But he was, maybe still is, Valance's friend. He sees flashes of Valance and Fett fighting together to save him. And Valance asks if him and uh, Fett were friends. Though Fett says that they're more like acquaintances. But, uh, so yes, Boba Fett is seemingly turned over to the uh, to Black Sun. requested that they, of course, disarm. Elsewhere, um, Tonga's wife, Losha, is uh, basically pit-fighting for the hell of it on, at uh, Civic's Bounty Bounties in the, in the secret back room. Though she says she's not doing it for the money. Seems like she's just doing it to fight. I think because she's mad at uh, Tonga for having, you know, for not taking her along on the current, on the current gig. But, um, the hunters are, of course, betrayed by Black Sun. However, that figured they would be in, uh, Palm the gas grenade, which you utilize against the uh, Black Sun air that, that's there, and uh, gas grenade as a concoction is lethal to uh, Feline. Um, Dirge, 4 LOM, Bosk, Valance, everyone gets in on the, on the shoot on the massive gunfight. Uh, Black Sun's forces are uh, brought down. And uh, Fett lives up to his end of the bar bargain. Coordinates to, uh, to a, a cyborg, uh, a cyborg fixed by the name of uh, Tar Kligson. If anyone can help balance, it's him. When Boba Fett's asked where he got the information, he says he got it from the only person in the galaxy he could ever trust his father. So, to be fair, Fett wasn't sure that the other bad hunters would survive. He knew he would, but that was about it. And so, Fett flies off, though it would seem that uh, his involvement with, the, with Tonga's crew is not over. That is where the issue ends. Alright. I have to, it, It's nice to, you know, that Bounty Hunters is at the moment currently featuring Boba Fett in a primary role. It would be probably the one, the one issue ahead with the book uh, so far. It's an enjoyable book, but I, I, I'm, I'm sure there, ha there were stories before I got it got into Star Wars books featuring him. But yeah, a Bounty Hunter book, a Bounty Hunters book that doesn't feature Boba Fett feels kind of off to me. Star Wars. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Night Terrors, number one. So, where we left off, Insomnia had seemingly put almost the entire world to sleep so he could uh, try to dig through the nightmares of the superheroes to find the Nightmare Stone. So, Night Terrors, number one, focuses largely on Deadman. He recounts his origin, 
Um, and he's still uh, possessing Batman's body. But uh, Batman and Dead Man managed to escape. With uh, and Dead Man, oh, excuse me, briefly tries to uh, possess night, uh, insomnia. Learns a bit about things, but uh, apparently he was easy in some of his medicine, and his powers were activated by the Lazarus brains. What he sees about it while inside uh, Insomnia, Insomniac's, or Insomnia's head is that apparently the Golden Age Sandman, Wes Dodds, was involved when it comes to the creation of the Nightmare Stone. But, uh, Somni is loose. Our dead man, looking, looking through Nightmare's mind, notes that Insomnia is basically, whereas most people bury their nightmares, he's burying his joy. But, uh, dead man repossesses, uh, Batman, heads out, and, and points out that, um, <clears throat> One can say, say what you want about Batman, but the dude works out. Batman is easily the most fit person that uh, Dead Man's ever possessed. Though he never really noticed because Batman hates it whenever uh, Dead Man takes his body. But, um, Dead man uh, procures a few things, and before uh, trying, before continuing his quest to figure out learn what he can about the Nightmare Stone, uh, Insomnia sends his forces after Dead Man. We get some glimpses of some of the others, but uh, among the uh, things that Batman had was uh, samples of Lazarus' brain. And he also knew the location of Wesley Dodd's grave, and so, well, Dead Man uses Lazarus Rain to uh, return Wesley Dodd's to the light of the living. Tells him what's going on, and, uh, well, Dodd's explains he, he loves a good mystery. And that is where the issue ends. I have to admit, I'm curious if there's any, if, uh, can you sort of any relation to it, the events from, uh, the uh, Wesley Dodds focused uh, Vertigo book from the 90s, Sandman Mystery Theater. Basically tell, recounting uh, darker tales of, of uh, Golden Age Sandman's uh, heroics. Moving on though to our next book, we've got Night Terror's Robin, number one. Um, Jason Todd and Tim Drake are both pulled into uh, Insomnia's, Insomnia's uh, Nightmares, uh, both while dealing with various cases. They come to the realization that they are in a, in a, in a dream, not, not reality, and uh, how do they get separated? Each one ha has a nightmare to deal with. It should be noted that uh, there is something, aside from having been Robin, there is something that, that in common that, that between uh, Tim and Jason. Both of them lost parents after becoming Robin. Parents that they couldn't save. Red Hood has to relive trying to save his mother, while uh, Tim Drake has to re relive the night his father died with insomnia making it even worse by having uh, by bringing in the Bat family. Um, but uh, try, try, the insomnia's henchman explains that what uh, he's doing is he intent with when it comes to Tim is he's gonna keep trying until he his heart breaks and gives out and he dies. 
that when the whole fa bad family is there, they also get killed. But uh, Tim and Jason are able to get into contact with them somewhat. Though so things aren't looking good for Jason. That is where the issue ends. Alright. Interesting start to things. I do I do like seeing Jason and Tim teaming up. And the I don't want to see enmity, but the uh, the dislike between the two of them is palpable. Though early on before uh, getting sucked into uh, night into uh, nightmare or insomnia's realm. Um, he is re Tim is rather short with uh, Barbara. Jason I can see being short with Barbara because well, it's kind of his shtick. But like Tim is, I just I, I, I just find it hard to believe that I just hard, find it hard to take that Tim would be would ever be a, a jerk, you know, to uh, Babs. Moving on though, to our next book, we've got Night Terror Zatanna, number one. So in uh, Night Terror's First Blood, uh, Zatanna and the other, and some of the other members of Justice League Dark were attempting to, were investigating the construct uh, that appeared in the form, it was in the form of John D's corpse. John D. being Dr. Destiny. The insomnia wave hit, and while um, Zatanna managed to counter, counteract for herself, casting a spell to keep her awake, the, Detective Chimp and Wonder Woman were not so lucky. But there are robotic heroes who are uh, active currently trying to save who they, who they can. Um, the uh, Insomnia has sent his uh, dream knights after the uh, after Zatanna. But she managed to get to the jail, the jail, well, the Justly Dark's uh, mystical panic room. But she also uh, calls him some help, and Robot Man shows up. Apparently, Zatanna is not too fond of the of the Doom Patrol, and remembers that the only other time she encountered a member of the of the team was Mento at the Sands that killed uh, her father. At least sitting right across from her as she held her fa dead father's hand. That said, the way to the Justice League Dark's anti-magical anti uh, panic room involves a maze, and so the uh, Dream Knights follow and uh, try and use their abilities against uh, Robot Man and uh, Zatanna. Um, mainly by being in face nightmare versions of those they've failed. And this includes Zatanna's father, Zatara. But, um, they're able to get to the, uh, the, the panic room and uh, while the Tana decide, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, we got, you got to do the panic room, that's, that's what I really need, so I'll just send you back to Doom Patrol, but uh, everyone's like, no, it's be it looks like you can still use, use a little bit of help here. So, they go to take on the uh, Dream Knights together, but uh, Robot Man is stabbed through by run through by one of them. Though he points out that uh, he's just he's a, just a brain in a robot body. However, it's at his point out of him that he wasn't being uh, murdered; he was being knighted. And Robot Man becomes the new uh, uh, Dream Knight, the Rust Bringer. And that is where the issue ends. Okay, all right. Good start. I, 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 I do enjoy seeing Robot Man and uh, just in general. Uh, also, I want to take a moment to quick talk quick briefly about this cover. Uh, I love it. I do. But rather than Night Terror giving off vibes of night of the Night Terror story, it really give, gives me makes me think more of uh, the uh, 
zombified covers variants from uh, deceased. So perhaps that was one that uh, was handy, and you know, rather than, and so there's a, the decision was made to use that. Anyways, uh, first and foremost, huge shout out to uh, Patreon patron Xander Lee. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Mastodon, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the, in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.